Hey guys, it's Angelica. Um, I apologize in advance if my eyes look a little wonky. I scratched, I think I scratched the cornea in this eye a couple days ago, so it's just like dying. So if I look like I'm crying randomly, just ignore it. It's just like, I don't know. But yeah, this video is not really going to be an oddities video, I guess. It's going to be, um, I went to Seagrove this weekend, which is in North Carolina, and it's a pottery district. It's famous for its pottery. Um, I live in North Carolina, but not near Seagrove, so me and my mom took a day trip there. It's north of us, because she saw it in a North Carolina State Magazine. So yeah, we went to Seagrove this weekend, and I got a couple pieces of pottery that are awesome. So I wanted to show you guys. They're really cool. They're not really oddities related, but they're interesting because they're particular types of pottery that are a little bit different, minus the first one, which I love and I bought because it just describes me perfectly. It was made by Tom Sanders. I don't think he's like a famous potter or anything, but um, yeah, he passed away not too long ago so I thought oh I might as well buy it now because there might not be one next time I go up to Seagrove which will be in a few months for a art festival thing so yeah I got this look at it do you know what it is it is one of my favorite animals an opossum and he got ran over he is roadkill and they had them on all different types of animals like they had a squirrel and they had a cat they had a cow, which I don't see cows that get run over like that, because, like, I feel like a cow would run over your car. But, yeah, I love this one. It was a little bit different color than the other possum opossums that were there. But, um, so I went ahead and got him because I couldn't wait. When I go back, if there's any left, I might get the squirrel and the armadillo because they were really cute, too. And they just, they fit my personality so well. So I got this. It was really cheap. Well, it's cheap for a piece of art. It was only ten dollars. Uh, I think the bigger they like the cows and the cats were a little bit more, but all the ones I like were ten dollars. So if I go back, then I just have to pay twenty so I can get my squirrel and my armadillo. The squirrel's so cute. I wish you guys could have seen it. I think I took a picture of it and I'll post it on my Tumblr so you guys can see it. Also, I got um the next piece I got was this. And this is a piece of, uh, let me pronounce it correctly, it's just crystalline, crystalline pottery, which is one of the things that this town is really famous for is their crystalline pottery, which is like the process. They pretty much, when they burn it in the kiln and they glaze it, they use a mixture of minerals so that when they glaze it and then they bake or bake it when they cook it and then they um they lower the temperature after they get it to really hot point they lower it and the minerals in it naturally form crystals on the pottery and um i think however long you leave them in there changes it and you know a whole bunch of other stuff but it's really cool that they grow crystals you can kind of feel them on this one but yeah um see where it's kind of shiny on there like here it's mostly up on the this part by the neck and it's really pretty it's kind of like a pastel pink and there's some purples in it which are like some of my favorite colors so yeah it's really pretty and um it was really cheap i think it might have been a starter piece because when you look at it it is a little misshapen for this artist holly kratz from yiz pottery she's got like a little Asian symbol as her signature. Oh, I turned the wrong way. But yeah, I think it might have been a starter piece because usually it's not that cheap. And I only paid eighteen dollars for one this size. So yeah, there were a lot more expensive pieces. So I think this maybe might have been one of her like starter pieces or maybe her first working with crystalline. I'm not sure, but I really like it. I think it's beautiful. It was the it was the first thing I bought and then the po opossum would have been second. And then I also got another piece of crystalline pottery from another potter shop. And that one is um, 
William and Pamela Kennedy are the artists. They both do it together, they're husband and wife, and they were amazing. We were there for like an hour after closing, just talking to them, me and my mom, and they are so cool. Like, they go out and do like archaeology type stuff, and they had like so much minerals, and they had like Native American stuff that they had went out and found, like arrowheads and other types of artifacts. They just found around where they live in Seagrove, and uh, their pottery is the Owar Ohari crystalline pottery. So I guess that kind of ties in with what they're into. I'm not sure if they're Native American or not. I didn't ask. They're pretty light skinned, but that doesn't really make a difference. They can still have some in there, but they were really cool. And they also collected dead bugs, which was awesome. When you walk in, they had this big glass case filled with bugs and minerals and like other weird stuff. So naturally, I was just like, I love you. So I got this little piece. My mom got a bigger piece from them, but I got this little piece of crystalline pottery, and this one's a little bit more intricate. You can see, like, these green areas where it's kind of like weird little bow tie things. Those are all the crystals that were grown onto it when it was in the kiln. And there's some uh, blue ones, like, towards the bottom. There's a couple different colors in there, which I think they can change the color just with different mineral types. So yeah, this one's really pretty. My friends really like this one. I really like this light blue area where it really didn't get much happening to it. It's really cool. And um, yeah, they were really nice. I wish I could have stayed forever. And I'm definitely excited to go back. Specifically that one and then the next potter, whose name I don't know. I was stupid and I forgot to get one of his artist cards. And um, like his business card. But I know it's called the turn and burn pottery turn and burn pottery um specifically for what he does but yeah when i go back i'm gonna i'll remember to get one because i'm gonna buy another piece from him but this pottery is really expensive i spent oh i spent like 14 on this one the smaller one but this was the most expensive piece of pottery i've ever bought because i'm not huge into pottery but i love this type of pottery i'm not sure what it's called i know the original process for what i was familiar with before was horsehair pottery but this one isn't horsehair this one's something else and it's just so beautiful so um it's emu feathers and what they do is if you know the horsehair it's the same with the horsehair they take the pottery out when it's molten hot mm -hmm. and they lay the horsehair or whatever hair they're using on the pottery it's um i think the native americans originally did it i'm not sure if someone else in other tribes and other parts of the world do it too but I know the Native Americans have famous pieces of pottery that have the horse hair. So, um, yeah, they lay it on there and it burns like an um, imprint of what they're laying on it. just burns it off. They don't have to scrape or anything. It just completely burns away and leaves the mark. So this one is like the horse hair, but instead it's with emu feathers. And it is just so beautiful. Oh, my gosh. So, yeah, this is it. So these are all emu feathers, and one of the things that emu feathers do that's really strange is that um, they split. This is actually one feather, and it grows into two fe like has two things coming out of it, which is something weird that emus have, among other things, because emus are weird. I do love emus, though. But yeah, their feathers split like that. There's a couple of them on here, and then some whole ones. But yeah, it's beautiful, and the shape of it's really pretty, and it's nice because a lot of them were just white with the pe with the feathers on it, and you can't really tell here, but this is kind of a cream, and it kind of has some shading, and it's just so beautiful. It was um, I want to say, oh, it has his name on the bottom. Oh no, it doesn't. He lied. He didn't even. He put the name of the pot. He put Turd and Burn Pottery, Seagrove, North Carolina. And then he has a Bible thing on here, John 3.3. 3. I don't know what that one is. But, um, yeah. So this one was my favorite. I think it was 59, I'm going to say. It was 50-something. I'm pretty sure it was close to 60 because when I picked it up, I was like, oh, my God, it's so beautiful. And then I looked at it, and I was like, oh, my God, I can't have it. And then I walked around thinking, oh, I'll just buy a smaller piece that I like. But I just kept looking at this and being like, oh, I want it so bad. So then I just went and bought it, even though I shouldn't have. But I love it. It's my prized possession now. 
make sure everyone sees it when they come in my room. It's just so beautiful. And I really look forward to kind of um, possibly collecting that type and like the horse hair, like those things. Um, the crystalline pottery is really cool, but um, I don't know, I might get some more pieces of that. But I'm really interested in collecting like the horse hair and stuff. My mom actually has a Native American made pot, piece of pottery that's horse hair. So that's more of like the traditional form and that one's beautiful and I really like those two so that might be in my future. But anyway, so thanks for watching. Uh, my next video I was hoping to do one on mummification. So I'll, I don't have a whole lot of mummified pieces so I was going to show the pieces I do have and I was also going to do like a tutorial almost type thing on mummifying the fish head I got at school. I got a big probably like this big of a salmon fish head and it's the pretty ones the blue ones with the white stomachs the pretty ones it's so pretty and I was like chef can I have this you don't need it and he was like okay if you promise not to eat it because I guess he was afraid I'd get sick if I took it home and tried to eat it because I look like the type of person who would do that but yeah so I have a fish head in my freezer but I have to wait until Friday when I get paid to buy enough salt to cover it and fill it and so He's just in my freezer now, which is really good because it kind of, um, you know, water, it kind of like, when it freezes, it kind of draws it out almost. Just like when you freeze vegetables and stuff and they come out, they're kind of like gross because it drew the moisture out and then the moisture melts and kind of like saturates it. So I was going to like, when I defrost it, I was going to put it on a rack and like pat it down and try to get all the water that had drawn out of it off so that like will help more with the mummification process. So yeah, I'm going to record that for you guys, but it'll be after Friday when I get paid. So thanks for watching guys. Also thanks to everyone who helped with my class project. Um, it's not due for two weeks and I still need like... 20 or so people to participate in it so if you want to go find it on my tumblr it's probably on page two or three and it's my menu for school they're all bizarre exotic foods so yeah i need people to take little surveys because i need 50 and i think i have like 30 something right now so thanks for everyone who helped with that i really appreciate it i was so excited when he told us we got to do a survey and we had to go survey people at the school and i was just like i'm gonna go on tumblr so I did that instead because I knew you guys would understand my menu better than some of the not so interesting people around my school. So yeah, thanks guys. So I'll see you next time. Bye.